Welcome to this HP Technical Configuration Guide. In this TCG, we're discussing HP and Cisco OSPF interoperability. I'm going to explain and demonstrate the configuration of multi-area OSPF on HP switches running the Provision Operating System and Cisco switches running Cisco iOS. This is part two of this TCG, explaining the configuration of OSPF on HP Provision and Cisco switches. In the first part, we looked at an overview, guidelines, command explanations, and show commands on both Provision and Cisco devices. In this part, we're gonna continue the discussion with a practical demonstration of the setup and testing of OSPF on HP Provision and Cisco switches. So on HP One, show IP OSPF neighbor Notice OSPF is disabled at the moment. Show IP OSPF interface shows us the same kind of information. On Cisco one, show IP OSPF interface. No interfaces have OSPF enabled on them. And at the moment, there are no OSPF neighbors. So to configure OSPF on HP1, conf t, IP routing. IP routing is not enabled by default on provision switches, so we need to specify it here. Router, OSPF. We now need to create the area, so area zero, area one. HP1 has two areas, so we need to configure both those areas on the switch. We then need to go into the interfaces. So VLAN 10, IP OSPF, area zero, VLAN one, IP OSPF area one, exit. Show IP OSPF interface. Notice OSPF is currently disabled. So we need to use the command router, OSPF, enable and enable OSPF on the router. Looking at interfaces again, notice OSPF is enabled on interface with IP address 10.1.1.1 in area one. HP provision devices display the area in dotted decimal notation. Cisco will display it as a single number. Both are valid and equivalent on interface 10.1.10.1 the backbone area or area zero has been configured. At the moment, it's waiting for neighbors. If we do the command again, notice the router has become a designated router on both those segments as there are no other routers and thus the election has been won by the only router on the segment, the local router HP1. To configure OSPF on Cisco one, type enable conf t ip routing this is a 3750 switch ip routing is not enabled by default cisco routers have ip routing enabled by default but not cisco switches so ip routing needs to be enabled we can then type router ospf1 one is a process number it's locally significant only different numbers could be configured on various routers but to be consistent, I'm gonna use one as the process ID. We then enable OSPF on interfaces by using the network command. So network 10.1.10.2 with a specific mask. And this interface is gonna go into area zero. Network 10.1.2.1-specific mask, and this interface is gonna go into area two. As you can see, a neighbor relationship has been established with the device with IP address 10.1.1.1 on gigabit 102, and the relationship has gone to full. Loading has been done. So, do show IP OSPF neighbor. As you can see, a neighbor relationship has been established with the device with IP address 10.1.1. The relationship is full. In other words, 
routes are being exchanged and that neighbor, which in this case is HP1, is the designated router. The IP address on the local segment of that neighbor is 10101 and the local interface on Cisco is 102. On HP1, show IP OSPF neighbor. A neighbor relationship has been established with Cisco 1. Cisco 1's state is backup designated router. Full relationship. So an OSPF relationship has successfully been established between HP1 and Cisco 1. On HP2, conf t. IP routing. Router OSPF. This router is only in area 1. So only area 1 is configured under the OSPF process. OSPF now needs to be enabled on individual interfaces. So VLAN 1, IP OSPF, area 1. The last step is to enable OSPF. So router OSPF, enable. Show IP OSPF interface or rather show IP OSPF interface. Notice OSPF is enabled on an interface with IP address 10112. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We have a neighbor relationship with a router with a router ID of 10 triple one. Show IP route. Notice the router has learned two routers via OSPF. This router can ping 10.1.10.2, which is Cisco 1, as well as ping 10.1.2.1, which is the interface of Cisco 1 in area 2. The last device to configure is Cisco 2. So enable IP routing, router OSPF 1, to set up OSPF with a process ID of one, use the network command to enable OSPF in area two on interface gigabit 101. Notice the relationship has gone to full. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Cisco two has a neighbor relationship with Cisco one show IP route. Notice two routes have been learned. Cisco 2 can ping 10.1.1.2, which is HP2. And HP2 can ping 10.1.2.2, which is Cisco 2. We now have full connectivity in this network. If neighbor relationships are not being formed, use the following commands to check your configuration and to check the network. So firstly, show IP OSPF interface. OSPF needs to be enabled on the correct interfaces in the correct areas. So ensure that the correct area is enabled on the correct interfaces. On Cisco, show IP OSPF interface brief will allow us to see similar information. Ensure that the correct area is enabled on the correct interface. Then check for neighbor relationships. So show IP OSPF neighbor, which is the same command on Cisco as it is in provision. If neighbor relationships are not being established or OSPF is not showing that it's enabled on various interfaces, make sure that the interfaces are up and that you can ping the directly connected neighbor. So on provision show interface brief shows that the interfaces are up. Show IP will show me the IP address configuration on the VLAN interfaces. On Cisco show IP interface brief will show me IP addresses on the VLAN interfaces or the physical interfaces. In this case, the physical interfaces are routed ports, so IP addresses are configured directly on the interfaces, and notice the interfaces are up. Make sure that you can ping your neighbor. So ping 
10.10.1, which is the IP address of HP1. You could also use show LLDP neighbor to ensure that you've got a connection to your neighbor. In this case, you can see that Cisco 1 is connected to both HP1 and Cisco 2. Debugging can also be used to check for problems. Debugging shows information in real time. So on provision, debug IP OSPF packet could be used to see issues with OSPF. Debug destination buffer will send the debugs to the local buffer on the switch. And then show debug buffer, or rather show debug buffer pipe include so pipe include OSPF will allow us to search for OSPF debug information in the buffer. As you can see here, as an example, an OSPF message was received from a device with IP address 10.1.1.2, which is HP2, going to the OSPF multicast address of 224.0.0.5. It's version 2, which is the OSPF used in IP version 4. As an example here, you can see we are sending an OSPF update to 224.0.0.5 using version 2. Our local router ID is 10.1.1, and this is being sent for area 1. There is no authentication information. Going down a bit further through the debugs, you can see that we received an OSPF message from 10.1.10.2, which is Cisco 1, going to the multicast address. OSPF version 2, router ID is 10.1.10.2, no authentication information, other information such as the hello interval and dead interval are specified here, and neighbor information is listed. So we'd be able to see problems with regards to OSPF by going through the debugs in the buffer. On a Cisco device as an example, we could type debug IP OSPF packet and that'll show us OSPF debugs in real time. So as an example, you can see that we received an OSPF update version two from a device with a router ID of 10 triple one. I'll just turn off debugs, so on all. The area ID is area zero. There is no authentication. Notice the zero indicating no authentication. And this was received on interface gigabit 102. So debugging on both Provision and Cisco can be used to check for errors. Another debug on Cisco is debug IP OSPF ADJ, which allows us to debug OSPF adjacencies. I'll shut down interface gigabit 102. Or rather shut it down. Notice you can see OSPF information is changed. I'll no shut it. Interface is coming up. Notice a two way communication has been established to a device with a router ID of 10 triple one. The state here is showing as two way. An OSPF election takes place to determine who is going to be the DR and backup designated router on that segment. I'll turn off debugs. And if we go back through the output here, we can see that an election is taking place between the local router 10.1.10.2 and HP1. HP1 has become the backup designated router. OSPF then goes through various states. So notice the X start state. Database descriptions are sent and received. The state goes to X start. And if we go through the output, we should see that the relationship goes to full. Notice here, the state went from loading to full. Full relationship is established with an OSPF neighbor router ID 10111.
debugs are very useful for troubleshooting issues with OSPF, Neighbor Establishment and Route Exchange. That concludes this video demonstrating the configuration and testing of OSPF on HP Provision and Cisco switches. Thank you for watching.